afternoon. Um, I would like to thank, before I start, the SBA and the, the LA Chamber for uh, bringing me out to lunch. You know, giving me the opportunity to sit down like, like regular human beings because this is, not, this is not my regular Tuesday. And like you saw the video, you got most of the background. We are a family uh, owned and operated business. And since that video was made, we have added uh, our new Downey store. And believe it or not, we're up to 700 employees with three locations. So that's like. That's amazing because when you start a business and you work for your parents, you don't really have a plan. We never had a plan. We never had uh, people helping us in the old days. Now it's so much easier. My mother just knew she had a passion and she knew how to make good cakes. She had to do them in Cuba out of necessity. And then she, when she came here, she realized she didn't want to do anything else. And she's a very stubborn woman. And my father would say, you need to get insurance, you need to get a job, you need to, you know, you need to help me provide for the kids. And she wouldn't have it. She just stuck to her guns. And she did it out of the house for like around f close to four years. And I tell everybody, we would come home from watching a movie and she actually had to use our beds. She would put um, spreads on top of our beds and she would bake all night long and then we would come home and we didn't have a place to sleep. So. You know, it got to the point that we had no choice but to, for, to look for a location, and that's what she did. And then my father understood that little by little that she had something, and that we, you know, maybe she knew what she was doing, and she did it for a while. And I think after two years, uh, he quit his job. He used to work for bandit camps of all places. Thank God he quit because they're not around anymore. And he uh, came to help my mother. You know, a very hard worker. My, nobody knows my mom uh, because she was always in the always in the back of the house making the fabulous cakes. And I want you to know that after all this time in business, her her recipes, her potato balls, her meat pies, her guava cheese are the the things that keep people coming back to the bakery. Because you know we now have mousses and all kinds of fancy recipes. But what keeps people coming back are her recipes. So um, I had a few challenges uh, coming today. Number one, I had to pray to God that I would have a voice because this is as good as it gets. This is me, the boy on the phone all the time. That's what I get, little boy. Can you please put your mom on? <laughs> so this is it. I'm not a little boy, but I sound like one. <laughs> so that was a big challenge. And the other, the other challenge was Bridget. She's somewhere here. Told me I had 10 minutes to tell you the story of a 36 year uh, family in business. That's gonna be hard to do. So somebody's gonna have to tell me to shut up at some point because I can go on forever. Um, she wanted to, for me to mention a few of the factors that makes us a successful business. And I think it is the fact that we remain a family business. You know, we, uh, we, um, we see our clients as an extension of us, so we respect them, and we would never give them what they don't deserve. So that would be called quality, consistency, and that, and that makes you uh, use the best ingredients. We use the best ingredients for all over the world because we know they deserve it. We know that they can tell the difference, and so we respect our customers by always using the best of quality, the best ingredients in the world, and then consistency. So that means if you go to Downey, or Berber or Glendale, that Cuban sandwich must taste the same everywhere you go. And let me tell you, that's easier done than said when you have 700 people you know, using your recipe. So that's a tough one. Um, the, other, um, the other thing that, she, um, that we consider an important factor is um, training. You know, people expect customer relations. So we, put a big, we go through great length to train our people because we know that not only do you have quality, you also need customer service, okay? That's big, you know, in, in today's industry. It wasn't 35 years ago, but it is now. So you better have a smile. And we have learned that in the old days, we used to hire people and train them from the bottom up. And we used to say, oh, 
he can be, you know, take, go to the front of the house and we learned that you have to hire for the job because if you don't have a smile and you don't like people, you can be the best baker in the world, but you're never going to be able to go to the front of the house and you'll grow white hairs trying to promote somebody that you like to go to the front and that will never happen. So you learn as you go that you have to hire for the job at hand, okay? We didn't know that. We learned as we, as we went. We also knew that um, uh, we needed to work with the community. We never had a budget for advertisement. We've been lucky that, you know, so that little video that you saw that, that was shown all over the United States, we, had, we didn't spend a penny on it. It just came to us. And I think the reason being is we, are, we have a lot of connections with the community because uh, we believe in giving back. You have to. If you, so whenever we go to a new community, we start building relations and they come to you. The, the parents with the kids or they need a uniform or the baseball team. Uh, it's a big challenge because they all think that, you know, because they own a tile on the floor of the bakery. Now you have to buy a uniform for the whole team. And then you need to also work with the hospitals and all the other, it's tough. But uh, we need, to, you have to give back to the community because they're the ones that are gonna keep you in business. And I must say that like four years, like three years ago, we made a, a, you know, a great connection with the, the LA Union Mission and they pick up every day from the three stores, seven days a week. So we don't have to about, you know, I don't have to worry about anymore um, coordinating the different people that we're picking up. Now we have one institution that has a mission that is clearly stated and they come in with their little bus and they're on time so it, it works for them and it works for us. So giving back to the community is very important. Uh, challenges for growth, I mean, they're all over the place. Daily we, 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 uh, we face them. Uh, I think uh, in order to grow your business, you have to be first ready. And we knew that happened after we went over 25 people. When we decided to expand and go to Burbank is when we did most of the learning, believe it or not. We went outside, we hired consultants, because now we have the money to pay for them. And we went to classes and we educated ourselves and we understood that in order to, to keep opening places, we had to learn how to delegate. And that's easier said than done. It's tough to have somebody else doing your job because when you're a family owner, you never want to trust anybody because it's your name on the line and that's tough. So that was the biggest challenge, learning how to delegate, uh, looking for good people, surrounding yourself with people that uh, understood what they, uh, with the family, uh, what the history of the family is and uh, what we believe it's a way to do business. So that was a challenge. And once we had all those people in place, then dividing the place, you know, dividing the bakery into different areas and putting key people in those areas, and then just meeting at the end of the day with what we call back of the house, front of the house, cake decorating, even the cleaning crew. It's all related. We have to work as a team. If the front of the house uh, doesn't motivate the back of the house to, to be up in production, we're not gonna be able to serve all the people that we do. And by the way, we, get an average of, we do like an average of 21,000 transactions in the Glendale store, and that's 21,000 transactions 10 times three or four people that come in. So we, are, we get huge numbers. So in order to multiply this, in order to be able to open Burbank, we had to really do a lot of uh, learning. And once we opened Burbank, I'm telling you, a year later, my brother was ready to open Dowdy. So that's how fast you can go once you have a, establish a model for growth. And you know, today, today in this new society, again, you got FPA, you have all the banks out there that are willing to help you. You have programs, you have the internet. There's so much more than when we started. You know, when you start as an immigrant, you don't even know the language, so it's hard for you to get any help. You know, uh, get a bank loan back in the days was, was a challenge because we didn't have the collateral or the money, so yeah, it's a lot easier in today's world. And if you want to start a new, a new business, I'm getting my cue here. If you want, if you want to start a, a small business, I would say, I would recommend if you want to go in, a, in the food business to please take advantage of all the colleges. They have incredible programs that are inexpensive. I can tell you, you know, 
what you have to learn, and then get yourself a job in a restaurant and start from the back of the house, meaning with the dishes and learning how the kitchen works, and then take some classes in, in business, and it will all come together for you. But please get, get educate yourself. Don't, uh, don't throw your money away of, in doing something that you have no clue, like a lot of people do, and we know that 90% of those businesses will go under within the first year. So take advantage of all the opportunities that are out there, and good luck to whoever's starting a new business. Thank you so much.